Hi guys, in this video I'm going to cover what is a VSO, what are the signs that you have a VSO, why should beginners avoid VSOs, the benefits of investing in a better violin than a VSO, and other general things to watch out for. So what is a VSO? Well, it stands for Violin Shaped Object. And I used to think that it just meant any violin that sounds super bad, like so bad that you really don't want to play it or even resell it because you don't want to give someone else a violin that bad. And that's why in my very first violin review video, I said this. I guess if I would quantify it, if you have like an $18,000 violin here and a violin shaped object here, just above the violin shaped object. Like, there are some people who do call these violins violin shaped objects. I wouldn't put it in that category. But I did some internet research and the general consensus is that a VSO is any super, super cheap violin that you can find on Amazon or eBay. So what are the signs that you have a VSO other than you have ordered it on Amazon or eBay? Because Sometimes you might not have ordered the violin yourself. Perhaps it was a gift from someone, or you bought it secondhand off of someone else. There are several things to watch out for. Look at the pegs. Are they made of boxwood? In a VSO, sometimes the pegs are made of a soft wood. The other thing to watch out for is do the pegs sit in the peg box properly? So in this violin, you can see that the pegs do not sit quite uh, all the way through the hole. They're not flush with the edge of the peg box. Now, this might not be much of a problem as long as the pegs are holding and keeping your violin in tune. The next thing to look at is your bridge. Is your bridge arched? The top of your bridge should be arched down and sloped towards your E string, so that way you can do really nice string crossings. Sometimes in VSOs, the bridge can be flat, or not arched enough. And this makes it really difficult to play on one string without accidentally hitting another. The next thing to watch out for with your bridge is a little difficult to tell if you're a beginner, so you might want to ask your teacher, and it's, is the bridge sitting too high? If the bridge is too high, it can raise your strings too high, and that can lead to very uncomfortable playing or even injury. And then on the other side of that, the bridge can be set too low. And in that case, the strings would be vibrating against the fingerboard, and we don't want that. Number five, we are looking at the fingerboard. Is the fingerboard made of ebony or a different type of wood? So violins typically use ebony for the fingerboard, and it is naturally black. But in a VSO, the fingerboard could be made of a different type of wood and just painted black. And that's not good, because other woods could warp. Next is the sound post. Now, if you look inside the violin, you'll see this little wooden peg inside the violin. This is a sound post, and it is necessary for the sound vibrations to travel from uh, your body of your instrument and out into the air. In VSOs, the sound post might not be sitting quite right or may not be cut correctly, and that can lead to it collapsing. Or it could be simply not quite in place properly and so your violin won't sound as good. Next is the purfling. Now the purfling is the black ribbing around the body of the instrument. In typical violins, this black purfling is a wood that's inlaid into the body of the instrument, but in a VSO, they can be painted. Now, if it is painted, okay, it might not have that much effect on the sound, but if you catch it, it does make you wonder what other corners have been cut in making this violin. Now, I think it is a given that the strings that come with any online violin are really bad, but I should mention it anyways. The strings just sound really tinny and never do any violin justice. So I always suggest purchasing a better brand of strings such as Dominance. So if your online violin arrives with all these problems, plus the cost of extra strings, the total amount of money you spent on that violin, you could have just ordered a better one. It is true that not 
every online violin comes with every one of these problems. In fact, it's even possible to order two of the exact same type of violin from the same dealer and one arrives with a bunch of problems and the other one arrives perfectly fine. And I find that for the online violins that are playable, there are still very, very differing views about them and whether or not they're even suitable for a beginner. On some parts of the internet, I have seen violin teachers feel so strongly against these violins that they actually start to cyber bully people who even consider them. And in my own past violin review videos where I said a mixture of both good and bad things about these violins, I also got backlash of people saying, oh, it's just fine for a beginner, or you just have to change the strings and it's fine. So the way I see it is, as long as the instrument is playable, it is actually highly subjective of whether or not it's even suitable for a beginner. But I still have a few reasons as to why beginners might want to avoid these online violins, even if they are playable. Sometimes these violins do stay in tune, but they are more challenging to get in tune than they should be. And this could easily frustrate any beginner. And I don't want any beginner to be struggling with that with their instrument. And if the violin sound is less than optimal, then the beginner might not be able to tell if their bad sound is coming from their technique or if it's coming from the violin itself. And this could leave them feeling really discouraged. Now, some people justify buying a VSO because they say, oh, I'm just trying it out and I'm not sure if I'll like it, or I don't want to spend a lot of money on this if my kid isn't going to continue with it. Now, what I have to say about this is that renting a violin from a reputable company isn't that expensive. And a few months of consistent weekly lessons with a good violin teacher is more than enough time to tell if you or your child enjoys playing the violin. And if you quit after a few months, your combined monthly rental fee should be either under or close to the amount of money that you would have otherwise spent on a VSO. I also highly suggest that you try out a violin before you decide to purchase it. And if you're a complete beginner and you have no idea how to even play it, bring it into your teacher and they'll tell you how good it is before you decide to buy it. Some companies even have rent to own programs, so that's something to watch out for. And if you do purchase a really good violin and take real good care of it, the monetary value of it will never go down. If anything, it will go up because violins actually get better over time. So if you or your child quits, you are likely to get your money back if you resell the violin. It will never be a bad investment. Now, I still have a few more thoughts on this. And the first being, you still may think that I'm full of bogus and lying because you saw a video online of a professional violinist playing an online Amazon violin and you thought it sounded perfectly fine. But something to keep in mind is that professional violinists will always be able to make a violin-shaped object sound half decent. But these professional violinists still could be putting in more effort into making these violin-shaped objects sound good than they would have normally done so with any other violin. And for the viewer, it is very, very difficult to tell. And the only way you really know is if the violinist in the video tells you. Now, I am a really big advocate of watching and reading reviews of any product before you decide to purchase it. However, you should also be mindful of the reviewer's motives. Are they being paid to make this review? Or are they affiliated with a company that is selling the product? This is not to say that these reviewers don't have valid points about these products. They certainly could. But if you do a lot of research and you find some reviews that are really, really bad and others that are really, really good, you might want to do some further digging. So that was all of my thoughts concerning violin-shaped objects. If you found this video helpful, do what every other YouTuber asks you to do and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.